So let's say you're given a question on organic chemistry, and that is to take some sort of a ketone and turn it into an ester. Well, at first, as it is right now, that might be a kind of loaded question because we don't know a lot of ways in organic chemistry to uh, insert an individual oxygen into our molecule without disrupting everything. But there is a reaction that we're going to learn right now that actually does do that, and it does it quite effectively. And that reaction is the Bayer Villiger. So what this question might look like is if you're given some, some ketone. So I'm just going to draw this one. Oops. And we're going to be turning it into this over here. So this is our, our ketone that we're using, and we are turning it into this ester over on the right in pink. And we said the way we're going to do this is through the Bayer Villiger Villiger reaction. And so all that includes in order to do this is simply just some sort of some sort of peroxy acid. And the last thing, of course, is our starting material, which is a ketone. Okay, so we know it's Bayer Villiger, so let's go ahead and go through the mechanism and understand what's happening. So I'm going to redraw it again real quick. Great, so we have our reactant. What are we supposed to do next? Well, next uh, next step is to throw in our um, our first thing that we said we needed was our peroxy acid so our peroxy acid and for this let's just use MCPBA because we know MCPBA we've used it whenever we were turning alkenes into epoxides um, and it gets a job done just fine so if you don't remember what MCPBA looks like it's um, meta Chloro, so metachloro peroxy benzoic acid, and let me draw the H right there. So you're given this, this, I guess, start to the problem, and you you have your reactant, and some reagent, and you're you're told to figure out the mechanism to so what's going to happen next. Well, if you're asked that, I would say to find the thing that's highest in energy and then do something with it. So in this particular case we have an acid and we have something on the left that could potentially act as a base. And so let's go ahead and do that and say that this ketone will be our base and these electrons particularly on, on this oxygen could see that H as being a sick enough to pull off. And so if it did that we just need one more arrow to show where our electrons are going. And, and we this would be our, our, our mechanism for this first step. And so let's draw this intermediate. I'm trying to do it neat. There we go. Don't forget we have the H now. And actually, I'm going to draw this H just for consistency. I'm going to draw it in white. And. So far we haven't changed anything else, so let's keep all of this the same. So now do, what do we get to do? Well, that peroxy acid that we used, um, we now turned it into its conjugate base, which we know conjugate bases are going to have that O minus to it. Right? So let's go ahead and redraw our MCPBA as um, its conjugate base, which would be... simple as that. And so now what happens? Well, we know if we just do a simple acid base uh, proton transfer, we just get straight back to where we started. So we don't want to suggest that. Instead, what, what would be a better suggestion is to say, well, we have something that um, it, down in, let me find a good color for this, down in this area, 
that carbon of, of the carbonyl is very delta positive. And so let's go ahead and suggest that we have some sort of a nucleophilic attack at that carbon. And so we'll flop electrons onto that oxygen just like this. So let's go ahead and draw our next intermediate from that step. Oops. And try and draw this a little bit neater because right now, and again for consistency, right now it gets kind of crowded. That's not that bad. Okay, so from this part, and sorry, real quick, just make that white. From this part now, um, we aren't finished, so we have to suggest something else. Well, um, there's not too much that that's immediately jumps out at you as being super obvious, so is there any resonance that we could do? I would suggest to, to look at resonance next. And to kind of give it away, unless you want to try it on your own first, um, there, again, are electrons on that, that alcohol, and if we allow them to flop down to make a, a double bond right here, well then we have a, a carbon that would have five bonds to it, breaking its octet, and so we have to move another bond to that carbon. Well, we're looking at everything as a whole. Notice that, um, notice, get the right color for this, that at this particular step, we have our, um, well, a derivative of the peroxy acid. So some peroxy group right, right here. And we know peroxy groups um, are, are kind of useful in organic chemistry because they're weak bonds. They're weak um, O2 bonds. And so we can break them really easily. So what we'll see happening is actually this bond, um, that carbon and this carbon, um, they'll kind of break, and when they do, the electrons will slide onto that oxygen. When that happens, we can effectively break that peroxy bond that we speak. And now, what do we have? Well, all of this stuff didn't change, but we're going to keep that the same. And we said this was a white H right there. And so this looks very, uh, very close to our actual, uh, our actual answer. So now we just have to do a simple proton transfer and we can say we've, we've gone up to um, our, our desired product. So let's do a proton transfer. Um, I, I will go ahead and show, show this happening, but um, it, it's just as easy as you think. You just take that derivative that falls off um, when you break that peroxy bond and um, that just looks like this. And now go ahead and, and just um, push your electrons kind of running out of space here. Just like that. Oops. And this oxygen, if I'm being consistent, it should be that white color. So uh, now what do we have? Well, as our product, we didn't really change anything on the left, so we just keep that kind of benzene part there. We've added that oxygen, and our benzene group on the right just was bumped down one. And this would be our whole entire mechanism for the Bayer-Villager reaction.